Good Sunday morning to you. It is good to be with you this day. My name is Jennifer Jaimez and I serve St. Mark's United Church of Christ in Bloomington, Minnesota. I welcome you to this worship service this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. If this service feeds your spirit or offers you hope, please feel free to tell others about it and share the link. It, as well as all our other worship services, can be found on St. Mark's Facebook page, as well as on our YouTube channel located under St. Mark's United Church of Christ, Bloomington, Minnesota. We also have a website, stmarksuccmn.org. And on our website, you can see other worship services, as well as learn more about our church and our outreach to the community. This morning, I also want to greet Emmanuel United Church of Christ in Greenwood, Wisconsin, and First Congregational United Church of Christ in Owen, Wisconsin, who are worshiping with us this day as their pastor, Asafa, is away. It is good to be with you. This morning, I have a greeting to share with you from the Gomez family, Mavis, Danny, and Tony. Good morning to you all. Good morning. We're happy to be here with you at, from St. Mark's and all the friends of St. Mark's also. We're in the garden. Um, we released some butterflies today, some pearl crescents and monarchs. And this is Danny and me, Mavis, and our son, Tony. Special guest appearance. <laughs> <laughs> we miss everyone at St. Mark's. Um, I think about all the times we took for granted when we were able to have coffee together and set up for communion and get the treats out and meet with the sewing group where we got more chatting done than sewing. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get together again soon. What do you have to say, my dear? I have nothing to say. Is nothing to I say. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Tony? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I guess just see you all probably sometime if um, hopefully, you know, around Christmas again, maybe we can all finally get back together. Um, but yeah, um, nice to see you all. Good to be here. Yes. We'll think about this in January when we look at this again. We'll think about these beautiful flowers and this butterfly that's there and wants to get in the picture. It was good to see you and wonderful to see all the beautiful pictures of the butterflies in your backyard. With all that being said this day, I invite you to take a breath in and a breath out so that you might prepare your heart and mind for worship this day. If you have a bulletin, please feel free to join me in the call to worship. Otherwise, I invite you to hear these words. With steadfast love and growing faith, we come as the people of Christ. With prayers of hope and songs of joy, we come to worship God, the eternal and ever-loving. With thankful hearts and humble prayers, we come to give God glory and praise. While we may be apart, we are together as people of faith as we celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. Together, let us join our voices in the opening hymn, This Is My Father's World. Dan. Of skies. And 
Thank you, Dan. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O Lord our God, who offers rest for the weary and refreshment for those for whom the world has grown old too early. Praise be to you who has given us your law to guide our lives and your love to support us in walking accordingly. Praise be to you, O God, our Redeemer, who daily calls us into new paths of life, lived by courage and faith in your never-ending love. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another in the prayer of confession. And again, if you have a bulletin, I invite you to join me. Otherwise, I invite you to hear this call to confession and then this prayer. Heavenly teacher, we do not always pray as we ought. Help us to speak our truth and to listen for your forgiveness. When we pray our Father in heaven, but forget to embrace all people as your children. When we say your kingdom come without working for your kingdom on earth. When we ask for our daily bread, but do not recognize it as your gift. when we request forgiveness for ourselves but fail to pardon others, when we plead not to be led into times of trial but walk willingly into temptation, when we honor you with our lips but fail with our lives. O oh Lord, forgive us. Help us to pray unceasingly that we may be transformed by the renewing power of the Spirit. Create spaces in our prayer that we might hear and live out your words back to us. Words of love and justice, grace and forgiveness. Amen. I invite you to hear these words of assurance. When we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, does indeed forgive us of sin and invites us to live life anew. Friends, believe the gospel that in Christ we are forgiven. This is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are a loved and forgiven people, and because of that, we can have peace in our hearts no matter what else might be going on in our lives. I invite you now to share the peace of Christ with those nearby with a handshake or embrace, or if you are by yourself this day, I invite you to give yourself a hug. I know giving yourself a hug is not quite the same, yet I pray that whether alone or with others, we may all feel the peace of Christ fill our hearts this day and always. The peace of Christ be with you. So it's the children's time, and I'd like to invite the young people to come a little bit closer to the screen, and uh, so we might virtually be all together in one place. And I wanted to say it's good to see you. I'm glad you are here for this worship service, and I look forward each week to talking specifically with you. And I wanted to share something with you that I found on a bookshelf this week. It's this little board book, and this book was given to my girls when they were very, very young, and it's called Prayers for Little Hands, and inside of it there are pictures and all kinds of different prayers, and you can kind of tell that maybe it was used a little bit, especially when they were young, and I found this as I was thinking about prayer this week and as I'll be preaching about prayer for the next four weeks. You know, prayer is just talking and listening to God. You don't need special words. You don't even need words at all. We can pray to God when we're happy or sad or worried or angry. We can pray at bedtime. We can pray before meals. I often pray a lot when I'm walking around the lake 
Sometimes when I'm driving, although I try to pay attention when I'm driving, we can pray anywhere and at any time, and we can trust that God hears all our prayers. Do you have any special prayers that you like to say? Well, we will be talking about prayer a lot, and I wanted to teach you a new prayer, and we will do this prayer each of the four weeks. And so by the end of four weeks, all of us will have it memorized, myself included. So I'm going to share it with you, and then I'm going to say it again, and I invite you to say it back with me, and we might learn this new prayer. This is how it goes. For this new morning and its light, for rest and shelter of the night, for health and food, for love and friends, for every gift your goodness sends, we thank you loving God. So let's try it. Say it after me. For this new morning and its light, for rest and shelter of the night, for health and food, for love and friends, for every gift your goodness sends, we thank you, loving God. Amen. Thank you for praying this with me. Thank you for helping to learn it together. And I hope you practice it a bit during the week. And the wonderful thing about a recorded worship service is that if you want to hear it again, you can just press rewind and it'll go back and then you can hear it again and again. And so we will practice it next week as well. Thank you for coming up. I hope that you feel you can pray wherever and whenever you are. And God always will hear you. Thanks for coming up. Go back and get in a comfy place so we're about to hear the scripture reading for this day. So the scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forget everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. This ends today's reading. Sounds a little bit different when you read it straight from the scriptures, and that was the NRSV version of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Sound familiar? How about this one? Jesus, gentle shepherd, hear me. Bless thy little child tonight. Through the darkness be thou near me. Keep me safe till morning light. These are the prayers that I remember from my childhood. And when I asked in the morning musings which prayers were your favorites, some of you named these two as well. One of you wrote that you would finish your prayers at nighttime, blessing everyone that you could think of so as to delay your bedtime. Very clever. Which prayers are your favorites now? Are they the same as when you were young? Do you pray the same prayer each day, or do you freeform it? Christians are a people of prayer. Of course, we are not the only ones. Jews and Muslims are also people of prayer. Prayer is one of Islam's five pillars that all observant Muslims follow. And I remember that when I was in Palestine and Israel, hearing the Muslim call to prayer over the loudspeakers, it seemed especially loud as it was right outside the guest house that we were staying in, and the very first call to prayer was very, very early in the morning. 
Who needs an alarm clock when you have the call to prayer to wake you up each and every day? I loved hearing the call to prayer throughout the day. We pray when we're happy. We pray when we're sad. We pray when we're in need. We pray for, when, uh, we pray for others who are in need. We pray for peace. We pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray with words. We pray with deeds. We pray for justice. We pray for those we love. We pray for those whom we will never meet. And in the words of one African-American spiritual, and sing it with me, not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. If you were to go to the Barnes & Noble or Borders Bookstore or Amazon.com and look in the section of books titled Prayer, there would be so many books we could hardly count them all. There are hundreds of books on prayer, how to pray, what to pray, reflections on prayer. It is easy to become completely intimidated about the simple act of prayer, which is really just lifting up our voices to God, naming our needs and concerns, and then offering thanks for God's blessings. Many of us have heard wonderful prayers, prayers filled with meaning and beauty and poetry, prayers that connect with our deepest concerns and worries and blessings. Many of you know that one of my favorite prayers is written by Anne Lamont, a well-known Christian writer who said that her two best prayers are, help me, help me, help me. And the second is, thank you, thank you, thank you. She recently added a third prayer, which is simply the word, wow. Sometimes we make prayer more difficult than it needs to be. We might be intimidated by those whose prayers seem to reach the heavens. We might at times feel like our prayers are not worthy enough, our concerns not important enough. Perhaps Jesus' disciples were feeling the same way. They had experienced those in the streets who prayed one way and yet acted in another. They had experienced those whose prayers went on and on and on in part because they like to hear the sound of their own voice. Even though those disciples had grown up in the temple with prayers being led by priests and likely prayers taught to them by their parents their whole lives long, perhaps they too were a little confused or uncertain or self-conscious. And so in the Gospel of Luke, they asked Jesus, Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus, in his compassionate and loving way, says to them, Pray then this way. And we have the prayer, which we often call the Lord's Prayer, or Prayer of our Savior, or simply Our Father. The Lord's Prayer is found both in the Gospel of Luke, which is the shorter version, and the Gospel of Matthew, which is the longer version. And as mentioned before, for the next four weeks, we'll be focusing on this prayer, a prayer that many of us have known our whole lives long. Roberta Bondi, a Christian author and professor of church history, writes that in the period of the early church, the Lord's Prayer was considered to be so precious that nobody was even allowed to learn it until the very end of a three-year training period before being baptized. Of course, it is so much different today. At St. Mark's, we pray this prayer every Sunday. Some of you pray this prayer every day. And sometimes, when something is so familiar, it can become almost rote. So I wanted to slow us down a bit and do a bit of reflection on the prayer that so many of us love. I have broken down the prayer into four sections, and each week we'll focus on a particular part of this prayer. And my hope is that when we are finished, this prayer will become even more meaningful than before. So let's begin with the very first word, our. 
first person plural. Not just mine, not just yours, ours together. In a culture and seemingly in a time when there was so much focus on me, mine, and I, our is a different way of being in the world. It is often said that the first word a child learns is no. Oftentimes the second word a child learns is mine. I wonder how differently our nation might have dealt with the COVID-19 virus if more of us thought in terms of we rather than I. How differently it might have been if we all had our collective health and welfare in mind rather than our own individual desires and wants. There is so much talk about individual freedoms, freedoms that are important to be sure, but I fear that it comes at such a great collective cost of we. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray yours and mine, ours together, my God and your God, my best friend's God and my enemy's God, our. Already, this is a radical beginning to prayer. Our Father. Now, I promise I won't go word by word for the whole entire prayer, but Father for some brings to mind a beloved image of their own fathers, fathers who loved them, taught them, guided them, and supported them their whole life through. But for those who lived with abusive fathers or absent fathers, this image is not so wonderful. For some, the use of the word father is so problematic, so heartbreaking, that the prayer becomes unprayable, if that is even a word. How do we understand the word Father? Jesus often referred to God as Father. It is an act of familiarity and of affirmation of relationship. Jesus points to God as a loving parent who cares for each of God's children. It is the relationship that is key. Our own earthly fathers were not perfect. They may not have been what we wanted them to be, yet God as Father is the one who cares for us and loves us. When we understand God as Father, we understand our relationship with God to be like the relationship between a parent and a child. We do not need to exclusively use Father language for God, for God cannot be contained with one image, one word. If Father speaks to you, then by all means, use Father. But if it does not, we can let it go and use another word, parent or mother, redeemer, creator. Our Father, who art in heaven. We hear the words of Psalm 115, which speak of God who is in the heavens. Revelation speaks of God seated on the throne with the angels and the cherubim surrounding God and singing praises. The Israelites visualized God up there in the heavens amongst the stars far from us. Many of us continue to imagine God up there in the heavens. Bette Midler's song, From a Distance, comes to mind for me, where she imagines God watching us all from a distance from the heavens. And while a lovely song, it suggests that God is so far removed from us that God is not active or present in our day-to-day -day lives. This was the radicalness of the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel. God not in the heavens, but God with us in the everydayness of our lives. Yes, God is in the heavens, but God is also right here in our midst, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star. And lastly, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is God's name. Sacred is God's name. God's name is not to be used lightly, but to be used reverently. It is not to be abused. You might remember that when Moses asked God whom he shall say sent him to ask for the release of his people, the burning bush response is, 
My name is I am. God will not be boxed in, will not be limited, will not be reduced to just one name. So God responds, I am. We struggle with that ambiguity. So we find in scripture all kinds of names and descriptors of God. Jehovah, Elohim, Creator, El Shaddai, Yahweh, the Alpha and Omega, Ancient of Days, Shepherd, Abba, Father, All Sacred, All Holy. So with all of this being said, we can pray. Our Father, Father, Mother, Parent of all, Creator and Giver of all life, you are the one who has birthed us into being, the one who loves us without end, the one who nurtures and sustains and guides us all the days of our lives. Like the best of our human fathers, you guide and teach us, nurture and lead us and help us to grow into people of faith. Like the best of our human mothers, you guide and teach us, nurture us, lead us, and help us to grow into people of faith. We are your children with whom you delight. You are our father, you are our mother, not just mine, not just theirs, but ours. You are our God, and we are your people. We give thanks that we have this kind of relationship with you. It is not like the relationship between an emperor and their subjects, but rather a relationship between a parent and child. That we may call you father or mother tells of that intimate relationship you desire with us and that we may have with you. Who art in heaven, you cannot be contained within anything human created. You are not this statue or this rock or this plant. Your home, your presence is in the heavens, in the air above and below and around us. Even though you seem far away, you are nearer to us than the air we breathe. Hallowed be thy name. Holy, sacred is thy name. So sacred that some dare not even say it, but refer to you as Yahweh. With your name comes power and your presence. Help us to refrain from using your name carelessly and without thought. Even your name contains power. You are the great I am, the one who refuses to be put in a box constrained by humankind with our limited understanding of who you are and how you are in this world. As we continue to reflect on this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, may it bless us, may it challenge us, may it cause us to wonder, may it deepen our relationship with God and with one another. May it be so. Amen. God has blessed us with so much. With grateful hearts, we offer not only the fruits of our financial resources, but we offer ourselves as well. May our offerings bring God's light and love and word to those who need it most. Amen. I invite us now to time of silent prayer we might, where we might name before God those who are in our hearts those prayer concerns that we lift up, prayers for healing, prayers for comfort. And after a time of silence, I will then join us together in the words of the pastoral prayer. So I invite you to a time of silence. Holy and loving God, we give thanks to you for hearing all our prayers, those spoken aloud and those whispered only to you in the quiet of our hearts. We give thanks that you do indeed hear all our prayers, know all our worries and uncertainties and fears, and that you carry our burdens with and for us each and every day. 
Holy God, as we continue to live in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of strangeness of times, help us to lean into you so that we do not lose hope. Help us to recall your faithfulness time and time again. Be with us as we continue to navigate unfamiliar territory. Help us to not give in to despair. Guide us with wisdom. Let us be convinced to do what we need to do for the sake of all of us, even when inconvenient or uncomfortable. When we are frustrated, grant us patience. When we are tired, grant us rest. We continue to pray for all those whom we know and love, those who are in need of strength or healing or wisdom or peace or employment or safety or comfort. We pray for all those we do not know who are also in need. Help us to be your hands and feet in this world of ours. Help us to live our lives so that they may know us by our love. We also pray for our world where there is so much unrest, so little peace, so much need. Empower us to be your hands and your feet in this world of ours. We pray for the leaders of this nation and this world that they make decisions that benefit all people, not just some, that they be open to the cries of all and work toward peace. Remind us each and every day to offer you thanks. Thanks for our many blessings, the gift of life and breath, the gift of one another, the gift of food and shelter, the gift of your love. Help us to lean into you and one another in the days yet to come. Help us to trust that you are with us and that we truly dwell in your house now and forevermore. Hear all these prayers spoken and unspoken and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Together, let us join our voices one last time as we sing the closing hymn for this day, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Dan?
Today's benediction comes from another prayer that was offered to me by a congregation member, a prayer that is special to her, and so I share it with you this day. God be above me to watch over me. God be below me to watch where I walk. God be in front of me to lead the way. God behind me to watch my back. God be to the left of me to keep me practical. God, be to the right to keep me alive and creative. God, be around me as a source of protection. God, be within me to allow me to love. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and forevermore. And let us all join in saying, Amen. God's peace be with you. Be well.